So how did you pass the half-life quiz? Uh, was it was it so bad? It wasn't so bad, was it? Um, most kids who pass the half-life quiz uh, either draw themselves a table like they learned in the video, uh, the videos, or or maybe you uh, drew yourself this decay function graph here and you kept track of you know your original amount and then half the amount and then a quarter and each time a half-life went by you know it was cut down 50% each time. Uh, however you pass the the half-life quiz, uh, congratulations. Um, but now there is, just popped up for you, there is an advanced half-life quiz. And I don't know if it really should be called advanced because believe it or not, it's, it's actually easier. Uh, why is it easier than the half-life quiz? Well, the, it's easier because there is an equation that will solve uh, this the five problems on this quiz. And what does the equation look like? It says the final amount equals the original amount times 2 to the negative time over half-life power. So time is just how much time went by. Half-life is the length of the half-life, you know, like maybe a year, maybe a minute, maybe 10,000 years, whatever. So um, there, the catch in my mind, uh, the catch is that I don't know where you freshmen are in your math classes, but this equation, that look, that uh, that negative t over h power thing, that might have that might be a twist that you're unfamiliar with. So for that reason, uh, I put a bunch of links in Moodle right here, and if you look at these web pages, you will find yourself going, "Oh my gosh, this ha advanced half-life quiz is easy." Um, matter of fact. Uh, you can even tell people who haven't passed the first half-life quiz this equation is on the equation sheet that's by the computers and this one actually would solve the regular half-life quiz too so anyway I want to keep this under two minutes so that is that